Chiefs Kingdom, I need your help. I need you to follow me on IG at Tyler Jones Live for more Chiefs content beyond what you see here on today's show. And I'm going to do you a solid here, folks. If you go on IG and follow me and like this photo I posted from over the weekend when I went to the Oklahoma-Tennessee game, unfortunately things did not go the way I wanted, but nonetheless still had a great time. If you like that photo and follow me, I'm going to follow you back on IG. So go find me at Tyler Jones Live. Do me a solid, like this photo, and we'll get started with today's show. Happy Victory Monday, Chiefs Kingdom. It is an overreaction Monday edition of the Kansas City Chiefs Report. Powered by Chad Sports, Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us as we break down the top overreactions from the Chiefs' 22-17 win over the Atlanta Falcons last night. Let's get started right away with the man of steel. Carson Steele passed the test yesterday with flying colors, not an overreaction. The Chiefs saw everything they needed to see from Carson Steele stepping in for Isaiah Pacheco, who is out for six to eight weeks. Kareem Hunt not activated just yet, and Steele got the majority of the workload over Samaj P. Ryan, and he delivered. He was very solid in the run game and did what he needed to do. Steele with a very good night, averaging over four yards a carry, 72 total yards on 17 carries. He impressed, and I think if you're the Chiefs, you got to feel very confident about this run game going forward, that between Steele and P. Ryan and then bringing Hunt into the mix, they're going to be just fine whenever Isaiah Pacheco comes back, that they can get through this stretch while he's gone. Steele had this to say on his first career start, it's kind of that next man mentality going through the week. And, you know, we kind of decided if we needed somebody to get, you know, 17 to 20 carries, we're going to have a guy and go roll with it. So that was kind of the motto going into the week. And he embraced it and did his job well. If you enjoyed that Chiefs win over the Falcons, I need you to do one thing. One thing only. That is spam W in the comments section. It's not even 24 hours since the win, but that doesn't mean that we can't stop celebrating that victory. Spam W in the comments section, and we'll continue here on the Chiefs Report. Number two, this is from me. I said this last night in the watch party, and my dad was giving me a hard time about this. So, Dad, uh, we disagree, but that's okay. Diversity, right? I believe, from what I've seen from She Rice to begin the 2024 campaign, building upon what he did as a rookie in 2023, that as Patrick Mahomes is go-to target, Rasheed Rice looks like a top-10 receiver in the NFL right now. He is playing that good. He's been on fire to start the season. He's had three straight games with at least 75 receiving yards. He's had two games with over 100 receiving yards to begin the year, and last night was no exception. Rice with 12 catches for 110 receiving yards, 9.2 yards per reception, and a touchdown score. Rice was awesome, and that continues the trend of what he's been doing. He's just a hair under 300 yards for the season, two touchdown scores, 12 yards of reception, and 24 catches with Travis Kelsey not playing too great right now. We'll talk more about Kelsey coming up later on. And with not having Hollywood Brown, not having Pacheco, Xavier Worthy still coming into his own, this has been huge for the Chiefs to get what they're getting out of Rasheed Rice right now. I think the best is yet to come, that this guy is just getting started. I am adamant he is a top-10 receiver, folks. Do you agree with me? Is Rasheed Rice a top-10 receiver in the National Football League, weigh in right now. Let us know. Type Y for yes, in for no, if you think Rasheed Rice is a top 10 receiver or not. Folks, no better way to celebrate a Chiefs victory than by subbing for dubs. We are trying to approach 59,000 subscribers here on the Chiefs Report. We're just over 800 away from reaching that next milestone. For daily Kansas City Chiefs news and rumors, watch parties for every game, including... This weekend's contest against the L.A. Chargers, our live shows, we'll bring you one on Tuesday afternoon. All that and more, breaking news, QDML bags, it's right here on the Kansas City Chiefs Report. 
YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV for the latest happenings on your favorite team each and every day. Subscribe now, and you'll be glad you did. Number three on Overreaction Monday. Is it time to hit the panic button? Is it time to go full-on panic mode on Travis Kelsey after another night where he was just kind of quiet, didn't really do a ton for this Chiefs offense? I think it's a bit of an overreaction to hit the panic button already on Travis Kelsey. Look, let's be honest, folks. The Kansas City Chiefs are not playing fantasy football here. If you're a fantasy owner, yeah, probably time to hit the panic button. But the Chiefs are focused when it comes to Kelsey and really just big picture with this team on what they do in January and February, not what they do in September. And we've seen that Travis Kelsey is getting double teamed. He's getting triple teamed left and right. And I think when it matters, he's going to show up in crunch time. So what if he's not playing great right now? You're getting enough out of Rasheed Rice. You're getting enough out of the other guys. Kelsey's going to figure it out. I'm not worried. I think the Chiefs have a plan in place and that he'll get going soon. Patrick Mahomes had this to say on Travis Kelsey. It's crazy because the respect factor teams have for Travis is unreal, and it's well-deserved. We're calling a lot of plays for Travis, and it's like two or three defenders are going to him. That's the great thing about him is he wants to make an impact on the game, but he wants to win at the end of the day. And the Chiefs are still winning. Even with Travis Kelsey putting up numbers that, for the season that in the past we would see in one game, eight catches for 69 yards, he's still making an impact, folks. With what he's doing, with what defenses are having to do to lock down Travis Kelsey, that's opening up things for other guys like Rasheed Rice, like Xavier Worthy and others, I think Travis Kelsey's going to be fine. I think everybody that's panicking just needs to settle down. It's going to be okay. Travis is going to show up when it matters. I think that he's going to be just fine. What's your concern level in Travis Kelsey? I'm putting it at about a three, and that might be a little too high, even honestly. What is your concern level? Weigh in, scale it for me, one through ten in the comments section. Today's show is sponsored by Z-Biotics. See this thing? I'm about to tell you about this thing. Let's face it, after a night with drinks, I don't bounce back the next day like I used to. I'm 28 years old now. I have to make a choice. I can either have a great night or a great day. That is until I found Z-Biotics pre-alcohol. Pre-alcohol is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to drink this probiotic before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. The first time I tried Z-Biotics was at my 25th birthday. As instructed, I drank a bottle of pre-alcohol before any alcohol. I was amazed at how good I felt the next day. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports to check out for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode and our good times. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. Is Kingsley a bust? The answer, no. That is an overreaction, folks. Wanya Morris gets the start at left tackle as Kingsley went to the bench after a rough start to the first two weeks to the season. And he did a solid job taking over that, that, that spot. But, folks, we have not seen the last of Kingsley by any stretch of the imagination. Um, he's a rookie. He went through some growing pains. He's going to be just fine. And if you're the Kansas City Chiefs, you go with Wanya Morris for now and give Kingsley another opportunity down the road. I think he's going to be fine. This it, it isn't overnight, especially I think it was a lot to ask of him to take over that job at left tackle as a rookie. Usually we see guys, when they enter the league as offensive tackles, they start as either backups or they start at right tackle, and then you move them over to left tackle eventually. I think it was just a lot to ask of Kingsley. I'm not worried about it. I think it's way too early to call him a bust. Andy Reid on the offensive line situation said the following, I thought Wanya did some good things in there. We'll probably stick with that same thing. You saw where Kingsley rotated in, played some tight ends, who so was able to get some good reps in there. 
And then again, Wanya had the good reps at the left tackle spot. Do they both have stuff to work on? Yes. They're young guys. They're young guys in a tough position with a tough go here. And they've got another good one coming here this week that they've got to prep for. Uh, taking on Bosa, Khalil Mack, a number of guys. It's going to be a test for the, them for sure. What will be the Chiefs' final record this season? If you had to put a number on it, how do you think this team stacks up? 3-0 right now. Feels pretty good. How do they go from here? What do you think? Let us know. Number five, Patrick Mahomes is off right now. I don't think that's an overreaction. But with that said, it doesn't mean that it's time to panic necessarily. The Chiefs are still finding ways to win games when Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs team are not playing great. And I think their best football is still in front of them. It's not a matter of if Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs will figure it out. It's a matter of when they will figure it out. And I think they're going to be okay. Look, Patrick Mahomes is still making the necessary plays, even with throwing four interceptions, even with only having five touchdowns. His completion percentage is still standing at a nice 69.6%, close to 70%. Patrick's, is, Patrick's fine. Everyone that's panicking needs to calm the F down. Patrick's going to be okay. Patrick said this uh, after the game last night. He said, I feel like I haven't played very well, and that's not a stats thing. I just feel like I'm missing opportunities whenever they're out there, not throwing the ball in the exact spot I want it to be at. I'm not playing my best football, and we're still getting wins, so I've got to get better to make the offense better. And he's right about that. I mean, you go back to the uh, one of the last plays on offense when the Chiefs needed a big conversion, and he missed two wide-open receivers. I believe it was Xavier Worthy and Rasheed Rice there towards the end of the game. That's on Patrick, but again, he's the best quarterback in the league. He'll figure it out. I'm not worried at all. He's going to be fine. He knows he needs to improve. That just means he's going to play with a little more of a chip on his shoulder with an edge, something to prove. He's going to be okay. For continuing Chiefs coverage, give me a follow on IG at Tyler Jones Live. Go like that photo, follow me. Certainly would appreciate it. We'll see you next time here on the Chiefs Report.